Hey, Tanya, can you hear me? I can. I can. You're coming in a little robotic, but I can hear you. What about what about now? <laughs> is it is it still robotic? It, it is. Oh, shit. Um, hmm. Save like a full sentence. Um, my name is Ian Lipkowski and everything's yeah, cool. Yeah, that's better. Okay. Okay. Oh, shit. Like, I don't know what to do. I'm on full Wi-Fi. I have all my bars. Okay, give me uh, give me three minutes here. Let me just get set up. And then right on the hour, uh, you know, in three minutes at 12, I'll do a little intro. Uh, I'm going to read your bio, and we'll introduce you, and then we'll get started if that's cool. cool. All right, awesome. Welcome to the Talking About Life podcast. I am your host, Ian Lepkowski, also known as Kowski on Twitter. And today we are incredibly grateful to have yet another guest on the show. We always start by giving gratitude to God and to the universe and to the energy for bringing these guests to us and to the guests for agreeing to share their time with us. Today, our guest is Tanya L. Prince. We are going to read her Twitter bio. Um, first, actually, I'll read her full Twitter name. It's Tanya L. Prince, Living a Transformed Life. The at, uh, the actual handle is at Tanya, T-A-N-Y-A, L, Prince 11. And her Twitter bio reads, if I was a bird, I'd be a forever phoenix. Spirituality enthusiast, Web3 teacher and investor, women in NFT, Twitter space host, moonwalker, and vFriend. So, Tanya, that's pretty interesting bio that you got there. Um, we're going to hop right into that. But first, why don't you just tell us, you know, introduce yourself and, uh, you know, how are you doing today and how are you doing in general? Well, first, Kowski, thank you so much for in, in inviting me to be on your show just to talk about life. And, and I always love being in your energy um, and uh, just giving the space and creating it. So thank you for bringing me on. Uh, again, my name is Tanya Prince. Like you said, I am out of the Chicago area in the U.S. A um, little bit about me. I am a mother of two amazing children. Uh, I ha am 
on my corporate end, uh, head of business development and marketing for a small national medical practice. Uh, on my entrepreneurial end, uh, you know, I am a Web3 investor. I have a small business consulting um, uh, company that I'm creating right now where I talk a lot about passive income strategies and building it in this Web3 space. Uh, overall, I am just living in this passion of educating and empowering uh, not only women, but everyone in this space of just financial uh, economic growth, especially within our, our times right now. And overall, how I'm doing today, uh, today I'm incredible. I uh, had a, a few cogs in the wheels as, as uh, parents do. You know, my child woke up sick and not in school and, you know, everything kind of went off track from there. But I am finding some reprieve right now to just come on here and uh, have a conversation with you. Thanks. Well, I'm happy to have you on the show. I'm I'm sorry to hear your child is sick. I'm recently a father. No parent, I believe, wants their children to be sick. So I, I feel for you on that. And I'm sorry you're going through that. But, um, you know, it sounds like luckily you have this little reprieve here and it doesn't sound like it's too, uh, you know, drastic uh, just based on your tone. No, no, no. It's a, it's a cold. <laughs> um, yeah. that's, that's what I figured, something like that. So, you know, at least it's not, um, you know, like anything else. So... Sorry, you know, your kid's got a cold. I, I hate, even when, she, even I have a newborn and, you know, even when she's like coughing, I'm like, oh my right. God, oh my God, do we call time? <laughs> like, what is, what's happening? Uh, so I, I know the feeling. Um, and thank you. Thank you. Even with all that going on, you know, still coming in, you didn't need to reschedule. That's awesome. Um, so thank you for being here. Thank you for giving us your time. And one thing I just want to say that I think is cool is, um, you know, you saw kind of um, my pathway to being a podcast uh you know, host kind of thing, because I started off coming to the barbershop and I was talking to you and Apikasi and all the other people in there. And that was kind of how I found my voice to feel like, OK, I could do my own kind of space thing. So it's just kind of cool. Like you you were there from like the yeah. beginning, like a lot of the guests don't know, like about the barbershop and all that and me finding my yeah. voice. So it's cool. You saw the whole kind of journey. So welcome. Yes. Um, you, you listed a bunch of stuff that you're passionate about. We could start with any of it. You know, the show is all about exploring guest passions. So it's really, you know, whatever you want to talk about. Obviously, I'm going to have questions. Um, but you had a few different passions. Is there is there one you want to start with? And then we'll go from there. Hmm. Well, you know, they they, I, they all end up intertwining at, at some point. You know, my uh, one of my biggest passions is just being um, in, a, in, a, in a space of empowering people. Right. So if that's in this Web3 space, getting on board and getting comfortable, if it's in their finances. Um, I didn't mention I've been in the financial space arena for about 17 years now. Uh, so that's definitely a passion of mine is uh, getting people educated in this space of uh, financial growth and wealth development and coming out of mindsets, which leads into that spirituality of spaces, right? Of, of just different mindsets and self-development. but. We could start there. We could we could start within the uh, space of um, self personal development. I love that. So I think this is a good qu uh, kickoff question. If we're going to talk about personal development, you said part of the aspect of that is the spirituality. Do you want to just talk a little bit? Because spirituality is a broad Very. spectrum. It means different different people. I always say I'm spiritual, not That's religious, right. but. Does that mean the same thing to everyone I say it to? No, I have to always kind of explain what that means for me. Yeah. So what does it mean for you? Uh, you know, along the same lines, I think uh, when people that also coin that same phrase of spiritual and not religious, uh, we mean like we, we, we see life or I'll speak for me, just seeing life as a, a collective, seeing that we are all um, connected spirits having a human experience, right? And it's not... Uh, catered to one teacher, right? If, if it's Christ or Buddha or, you know, Shiva or, you know, it, it's not necessarily coined to one teacher or one understanding of um, who our higher power or what our higher power is. So I feel like um, for me, spirituality just means I am definitely aware of and, and aligned with there being a higher something bigger than me that's connecting all of us together um, and that everything that's happening is perfect at the time it's happening. Uh, and it's all, yeah, it's all for our growth, right? So this entire experience that we have here 
uh, in the 3D we say, right, in the, in the human spheres is for our growth and development and our experience with love and affinity and just, just, just all of that. So that's where I'm at with spirituality and um, just not catering toward one path of learning and understanding who God, universe, source, creator is. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah, it makes a ton of sense, and I love that. And it's it's a large part of the way I see it. Let me ask you this, because I agree with everything you said, and everything you said is part of my vision. There's this one other piece that I have, though, that I wonder if you would agree or disagree with. I agree that there is no like one religion, or not yet, or whatever. There's no one, one religion I'm following or for me. But what I would say is the way I piece together the spirituality is I kind of see the truth as being real. Like I, I think like there's a real truth some somewhere, somehow, like there is some sort of spiritual knowledge or truth. And for whatever reason, like bits and pieces of it are scattered through different religions and philosophies and all these things. And the way I've come to my spirituality is kind of like looking for the core tenets, like almost like religion is like a puzzle mm -hmm. and all of them are like pieces. And if you put together, you know, if you, you throw away all the like, you know, the bad stuff or things that are kind of weird about some religions or what, like, you know, you realize the core principles are, you know, love and brotherhood, sisterhood, family, like taking care of each other, not like killing each other kind of thing. And like, like to me, that's also part of spirituality, like recognizing that religions aren't quote unquote wrong, but there's a place in religion where like you start killing each other in the name of peace. And that's to me, that's clearly backwards. And it's saying, no, OK, fuck this stuff where you start killing in the name of God, because that is not what God wants. If you understood any of the religious texts um, and you just do the peace, the love, the light, and you realize that God is. Like you said, is we're not picturing like an old white man with a beard. <laughs> you know, it's a it's an energy. It's it's probably masculine and fem. It, you know, it's everything. It's a tree. It's a it's the fan in my room. It's my TV. It's my baby. Like God is everything, or source or energy is everything. Would you kind of agree with that too? Yeah, absolutely. That there is it, and and just to to you know recreate what you said that you see spirituality as. Um, just being this 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 cord, if you will, right? This cord that there's there's a foundational cord in between all of these things that do tie them together in one way or another. Um, but I love the analogy of yeah, there's puzzle pieces, right? And and if we put them all together, it's going to form some big beautiful picture. Um, but there are some dark spots. There are some light spot, you know, spots. There's there's some grim. There's there's human that's in this, right? There's human thought and development and how things occur for them. Some, you may say something is weird or bad and someone else may say that's, you know, ne necessary, right? For, for cleansing and it's, it's just this, you know, a concophony, but at the same time, there is a, uh, an absolute something uh, consistent uh, in, in all of it, right? And, and that's what I, I hear you saying. Like, yeah, there, there's definitely a bottom line consistency to what it means to just be human, you know, or in the spiritual um, space of love. Um, again, like you said, affinity. Uh, there's, there's a, a brotherhood, a sisterhood, a, a masculine, a, a, you know, feminine. There's there's definitely a cord in between everything. Now, does everyone see that? I don't know. Is there an absolute truth somewhere? Yeah, I, I think so. I, I could agree with that. Again, I don't know if everyone else would agree with it, but I feel like there's way too much proof, you know, out here to, to suggest that there is, um, you know, a constant. Yeah, that's, that's the way I felt about it. And my journey transparently i started off as an atheist looking to like disprove god and get into mm. arguments with people who believed in god and tell them they were dumb and wrong and which which i don't i'm not proud of that but through that path i ended up trying to disprove them and instead i ended up proving it to myself mm. because i could not ignore my my intellect could not ignore like the pattern recognition mm -hmm. that 
through all these different religions, people are all talking about the same thing. Like, like, and the religious texts, like people were not, um, you know, at some of these times, like, you know, influencing each other. It's not like, it's not like, um, you know, the person who wrote the Bible helped like write the Upanishads, you know what I mean? <laughs> so when you see coincidences in there, it's like, okay, that's like, they didn't, you yeah. know what I mean? They didn't influence each other. So that arose naturally. So yeah, to me, it's like, you just can't ignore like the patterns and even, even me going into it, like thinking I'm going to, I'm going to, this is all bullshit. I, I got convinced the other way because of the, it, to me, that's, you know, not everyone sees it. Like you said, it's a thread to me. It's like so apparent that it actually, I was, I was looking not to see it and I saw it anyway. That's how obvious it was to me. Once I started taking in all the information, like reading, you know, reading parts of the Bible, Bhagavad Gita, you know, the Torah, um, Upanishads, the Vedas, like looking into the Quran, looking all into all these different things and trying to get the source. Um, I definitely came away with something. And then like, you know, uh, Rumi, mm -hmm. Hafiz, like spiritualist poets, mm -hmm. like all these poets across different uh, times talking about this energy and this like light and all the poems like almost are the same. And I, I just can't ignore the coincidences. One thing I also think is interesting that you said that I've been thinking about um, more recently is you said something to the effect of like, whether whether it's apparent to you or not, the universe is unfolding exactly as it should. I think that's one of the lines from something called the Desiderata, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong. But um, either way, that that is a really beautiful concept because a lot of my spiritual journey, I felt like you have to like slay evil and be this like warrior. And to some extent, I still believe that's true. Like if there's like injustice in front of you, you have to act against it. Mm. But there's also this like deeper part of spirituality that I'm finding and, you know, religious teachers where they go, yes, but it's the yin and the yang. Yeah. Like there is a certain amount of darkness that needs to be in the world, a certain amount of bad, like, and even though it feels like shit and it seems unjust, like there is some grander, bigger picture where the, the interaction between light and dark is creating some sort of spiritual evolution or progress. And if it was all light, we wouldn't go anywhere because yes. you need conflict to progress. Yeah. Um, so th that's also part of my, uh, my mindset here. Would you, would you, you know, kind of agree? Or yeah. That you know, what I hear you saying is like, Hey, it's, it's incredible that you, you came from really, uh, even if it might've started off as a pessimistic approach, but you were objective. And because you were so objective, you were a witnesser to all these things happening. And you were able to come from a space of, well, let me look at all this stuff, all this, you know, as you said, this, let me disprove all of this. But you were able, because you were from such an objective witnessing space, you had no, um, there was no bias when you went to go look into all of these different knowledge and education and history. You know, what I hear you saying is, because I came from this space of not being tied or programmed or conditioned in any one way of being or when any one religion that you were able to pick up these materials and develop this understanding like, wow, this over here from these centuries ago is saying the same exact thing from this completely different culture setup of people and they're speaking about the same thing. How is that possible? So it's, it's incredible to hear that because you started off basically like a blank slate, right? You weren't born into a molding, which some people do in religion, right? They're, 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 they're born into an upbringing that says they have to look at God or spirituality in this particular way, which creates a filter, right? For them to either not, not see the, the benefits or the beauty or the, the, the patterns in other, you know, religions or spiritualities. And with you coming from a space of, I have no filters other than the filters that I don't believe any of it, <laughs> you were able to discern like, wait, I would be completely in a space of denial if I don't, or even just pride, right? If I don't come to the space of saying, hey, there is a clean, cut pattern here that cannot be explained by anything else but a divine energy or, or you know something else that's tying this all together um and 
I would absolutely agree that again, and, and I haven't read or anything about the, the, the Deserata, but um, being in a space of yes, everything is unfolding perfectly as it should. You could probably look in your own life. I know I could look into my life and see that at any time that I had, you know, really crappy experiences in the moment, right? That something amazing, some growth, something happened in the future that if it wasn't due to that, I wouldn't be where I am now, right? You know, just to uh, be, you know, uh, share my story, just a tiny bit parts of it. Like I'm about mm, uh, close to four years out of um, a very unhealthy, uh, unhealthy marriage, unhealthy space, right? And, and had to really get out of that, that space and recognize that I was really primed and groomed by the different men or whatever in my life to really end up in an abusive type of relationship, right? And it took, you know, it took recognizing and discovering all of that in that pain, in that that fight, in 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 that in that um, that growth, right? To 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 really come out of that and look back and really see what was evolving in my life. But because I had that foundation. You know, and I was able to put that in the past where it belonged, you know, stop carrying it into my future and created this beautiful life of possibility, you know, uh, and, and empowerment within my within myself. But if I didn't go through that, you know, I wouldn't be here right there. I wouldn't have an appreciation for that pain, for that growth. Right. If, if we're looking at like like working out at the gym. I can't appreciate those those sore days, right? Until you have the muscles or the results, you know, you you kind of want it out of it. So, I that's what I hear, you know, when I hear you say your experience with coming into this realization, and I do agree. <laughs> awesome, I'm happy to hear that. Now, something that stuck out to me when you just were saying that there, um, you don't have to talk about this, but if you're comfortable. Are there any like specific lessons or like if someone else is like in a, I don't know, bad relationship, abusive relationship, like harassing type thing. And, you know, they're in it like they're, they're where you were and maybe they don't know how to get out of it on their own. Is there any like words uh, that you want to just kind of like share with people who might be in that situation or maybe like a lesson you learned or that type of thing? Or if it's like, no, that's trauma. I don't want to speak about it. That's fine. But, you know, how do you feel about that? No, um, absolutely. I, I feel like some, we, many people go through these situations and it's, it's and when they grow through it and, and uh, evolve into a, a space that is, is no longer there, I almost feel like it's a responsibility to share what worked, you know, um, because, there are not, you know, there's, there's definitely not a, if someone's going through it, there is someone going through it right now, right? There is someone that is questioning their, their instinct, their intuition about things. And if that's, that's one thing I would absolutely um, share, or, you know, want to want to pass along to someone is really not doubting their inner, you know, their intuition, right? We were, we're not really taught to identify or even align with, you know, this feeling of this, this something's not right. You know, um, many, many times in these relationships, I think I saw a quote on Instagram or something is like the, the very thing that breaks you, uh, that you break up with a person for is usually the very things you notice at the beginning <laughs> that you ignored or thought that, you know, it would change or whatever. Um, and I would say in a lot of my situations that there was always, always this voice of this, this isn't right, right? Or I'm not feeling like this is a, a space of, of growth or health, right? Um, and, and just doubting that voice, right? And, and uh, that's really a space, especially for, for women, I feel, like we're we're programmed in in some in some ways to be in a space of obligation or you know people pleasing and just really ignoring that 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 inner voice that says 
you need to go, right? Or, or finding some other reason why uh, that can't happen, right? Or, and um, if I could give any advice to someone in a, in a trauma situation is go get help, right? Some people, like I didn't even know I was in what is called, you know, a domestic violence uh, relationship because it wasn't, it wasn't getting, you know, it wasn't physical, right? But it took a, it, going to therapy after a very, very dark time in my life where, um, you know, my thoughts were not great. Let's put it that way. I was a very, was in a very fragile state and not having life seem way more appealing than continuing to live, you know? Um, and the universe put someone in my path and uh, they heard my story and said, hey, you know, I'm gonna refer you to go get, you know, to talk, talk to someone. You know, here I was in my mid thirties and really didn't understand that I was in, you know, a domestic violence situation because of my understanding of what violence meant was something physical, right? But I would implore everyone, go find out what that is, you know, because it is very psychological, it's very emotional, it's, it's financial, it's, you know, um, there's so many other ways that are, sometimes I feel way more, yeah, not even way more, but just as if not more detrimental than say physical bruises, you know, and those, those signs are very loud in the beginning of relationships. It's just that sometimes we don't. Just to just to clarify, if it's not physical violence, I'm I don't think you said it specifically, okay. but I'm getting you mean like verbal abuse or like taking like money kind of thing or like do you want to just yeah. like like doing that? I don't. No, know. no, no. I appreciate it. Thank you for just yeah reframing that. But yeah, verbal verbal abuse, right? Um, the demeaning, the dimish, the diminishing, the silent treatments, the um. I think another term is like, you know, called crazy making the, the sort of thing it's, it's where they're um, making it seem like everything is your fault, right? You can't do anything right. Uh, those, those spaces of where they're, um, you know, questioning your parent, you know, your parenting skills or just, you know, finding every way to make you feel less than. And honestly, that space was, was, and this is where it may get a little um, sometimes confronting for people is understanding like that space was there before that person came into your life, right? And this is where the the yin and the yang kind of comes in. Whereas, wait, wait, Tanya, yeah. Tanya, what it, that I think that's important. What do you mean by that? That space was there before the person came into your life. So, yeah, so that's what I'm saying in the sense of we get into a. Tr attraction right like like sometimes we attract the people in our lives to help us clearly see what we need to work on within ourselves. so specific example in, in my my life i i feel like some of the partners highlighted where i had a low self-worth um they highlighted where um i felt you know small so it's like they would say things that would make me feel smaller right um or or if i felt less than it was it was just highlighted in these spaces um let's see even an easier way to put it you know how people say you know someone's pushing their buttons right or being triggered in some way i would say that button was there before they came right they're pushing something that was already there so it's 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 a space to recognize this is where you're, this is where you need to love yourself, you know, and this is where you may be looking for it outside of yourself. Um, and what you're getting back is how you feel about yourself. Does that make sense? Yeah, I would. Yeah, of course. I would say, um, and I, and I knew what you meant. I just, you know, we had all these listeners and I feel like it was subtle, but the best way I were one of the ways I conceptualize it is a seed can only grow in fertile ground. So if you don't have the initial conditions for something to, you know, flourish or to start growing or to create a life or, you know, to begin, then it can't. Right. Yeah. So that's, that's kind of what you're saying. Like you, you had the fertile ground, like your soil 
was ready for seeds of discontent. Like, mm -hmm. and if you and if you put happiness seeds in your soil, they wouldn't have grown. Your soil was not primed for that. Absolutely. Like your base condition, your setup was not ready for that. Like, or if it's a, if it's a puzzle type of thing again, like that's like an analogy, you know, you, you had a missing puzzle piece. The puzzle piece you had missing was a certain shape. You, you built the whole rest of the puzzle and you said, all right, I just need one more piece. It's a relationship. And the, the space you left to put that puzzle piece in, no matter who the fuck you found, they were going to treat you like shit. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I don't mean to say yeah, that negatively. I, I think you know yeah. what I mean. Because you had that low self-worth already, because you're the one who drew the cutout for what that puzzle piece was going to look like, whoever you found was going to fit it. And even if it was a different way, a different person, it was like, and this is what I think you're saying, like the, the space was already there. It was like inevitable because of your initial conditions that if you didn't between then and finding a relationship, if you didn't, you know, go to therapy or have an epiphany or like change your vibration or, you know, what you were attracting, the way you feel about that, uh, sorry, the way you feel about yourself you were definitely going to end up in this situation. And then the only way to get past it was to end up getting into it and then getting out. Yeah. Of it. Um, I think you're, you'd agree with that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. So like, like you said, it's like you're, you're certain almost probable, you know, future um, was going to end up this way. And, and sometimes, you know, I wouldn't even say that many people made that puzzle piece around it. Right. Because that is where, conditioning and you know um upbringing and experiences made that made those puzzle pieces right it made that puzzle right, right? It's not like you necessarily did right. it yourself. i kind of wound it up that way right you know? yeah it's, it's not a blame yeah. thing but yeah it's it's that's how you end you ended up with that space in that yes. shape yes that's what yes I mean. yes so and the beauty of again these experiences again if you like you said, if you come to the space of, of uh, epiphany or recognizing or, you know, is you're just at this level vibrationally where it's just like, OK, that's done. <laughs> right. Um, you recognize how, at least for me, I was so grateful for everything, you know, that I've gone through, even the people who I put at cause or at blame for it, because I recognize like I, I don't need to put my power over there into saying they did something to me right you know it's now at the space of i recognize this is this was here you know before my husband before an ex-fiance like this was here and like you said there's no blame but this is how i ended up being right it, it, it's it's generational stuff um but coming to that then i look back there's this book called uh radical forgiveness that speaks about everyone's doing exactly what they're supposed to do in your life, you know? And if we call these, these experiences into our lives, you know, um, then it's being grateful, again, if you come through it um, and, and take ownership of it, that it was for your growth, right? It was, it's for my growth. I would not be here today and I'm still on my way somewhere but I wouldn't be where I am now if it wasn't for going through that and growing through that. Those I would, I would agree with that. I, I don't know where I heard it, but I think there's a phrase. Um, if you can't forgive graciously, forgive selfishly. Mm. And what that means is some people forgive the other person, like out of this beautiful place in their heart where they're letting the other person off the hook. Uh, and that's how they see Yeah. Some people are so angry and vengeful, they go, this is actually an injustice if this person gets off the hook. This person deserves to be on the hook, and it's unjust. Gotcha. You know who doesn't deserve to be on the hook? You. you. Yeah. So when you put someone else on the hook, and you're angry, and you carry around you know, this like feeling of resentment, you're putting them on the hook. But when you put them on, you, you, you hook yourself mm -hmm. too. You didn't realize it. You think it's just them. But no. This is like, I think, a Buddhist quote mm -hmm. or something. Um, like... Anger is like picking up a hot coal with the intention of like throwing it at someone else. But before you can, it burns yeah. your hand and you drop yeah. it. Like yeah. you're only hurting yeah. yourself. You know, it's like, it's like trying to poison yourself and accept someone else, uh, expect to someone die. else to get right. sick. Like that's, that's like the vengefulness. That, so if you can't forgive quote unquote for the other person, maybe not everyone can like that's the forgiving graciously. I think that's the goal. I think that's what you aim for to even like see it like, Hey, everybody's playing their roles and this and that. And, you know, maybe they had trauma too, that made them like this. Like it's the big picture. Yeah. That's the, that's the beauty. But if you need a half step, 
you know, to kind of eventually get there, start by forgiving selfishly. Like it's easier for people to be selfish. Start by forgiving other people. So you don't have to carry around yeah. that baggage. So you don't have that negative energy. You're not thinking about it. Like you're, you're not like holding that situation in your energetic space and potentially attracting more like that because you're still kind of vibrating with those memories at that level. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. You're carrying around and, in, in you know, like a, a inauthenticity um, when you're, in that space, you right, of, of, yeah, yeah. Uh, all, all of that say, yeah, yeah, you got it. There's really no, no expanding or expounding on, on that. Um, a hundred percent. I think we're totally agreeing here and I'm loving the vibes. Now I'm realizing we're about halfway through here on the hour. Um, we've talked a lot about spirituality. That's one of my biggest passions. I could go the full hour talking about it. However, you know, this is all about you and spotlighting you and getting your word out there. And I know a big part of your mission and your goal is helping other people, you know, like financially, uh, with mindset, um, you know, and you have like a business uh, around that. And then you have like other endeavors in your career. Why don't we uh, why don't we shift focus here? And we could definitely keep the undertones of spirituality. But why don't I let you give, uh, you know, a little bit of a spotlight or sunshine to, um, you know, the other side of your life that you mentioned? All right. Um, well, okay, well, we go with uh, just recently going through again, this, this, this transformation, right? Of, uh, and there's always, like you said, there's always going to be this undertone and uh, getting to the space of just acknowledging what I'm up to in life right now. And um, recently, I, when I was introduced to the Web3 world, last year, right, of twenty the beginning or the end of 2021, beginning of 2022, I fell in love with this kind of crazy world that we're in right now. But the reason why I did is because I, I, I know um, coming out of this, uh, let me get succinct, being in the financial space and the financial world since 2007, graduating college, I uh, came out into this space understanding that a lot of people um, do not have, and I included at that time, a strong understanding of money and growth and wealth development, right? Um, we are not, I don't know about now, but we are not taught in schools, right? What it means to live life with financial stability. Um, we didn't have a lot of life courses period you know in schools and i don't feel like that has changed much um and then uh people's access right or most people's access in in this particular country or even just globally um has been inhibited you know limited by the lack of lack of knowledge lack of support lack of um uh access you know and it didn't change much even when I got into the spaces of being a, you know, financial um, agent, you know, life insurance, all these really important aspects of the, your financial foundation. I still noticed that it was hard or a challenge, I should say, to get the people who needed it the most um, to get them access, right? Like I, I started to struggle, say around 2017 or so, when I am trying to teach, say, your 40 plus year old or your 50 year old about how money works, right? And now they want to retire, you know, in 20 years and they have nothing saved. And here I am going to show them a, you know, and this may get a little flat from some people, but again, I, as an agent for a while, I, I understand, but it was hard to go to these people and say, put your stuff in a 401k or, a, you know, IRA or anything like that put away money that you barely don't have now, you know, and still give them a, some sort of illustration that they'll be able to retire in a healthy space. And it was just, it was just not, it was not there, right? It was just not there, right? 7%, 4% a year, 9% a year, you know, it, it's just, it just wasn't there. Most people couldn't fit that. So coming into this space, um, this Web3 space, this crypto dig this digital space, I saw massive opportunity for people like that to now get access to control their money, their growth, you know, 
um, what they're bringing into their household, even, even having an opportunity to build generational wealth. So I was really excited about what was here in this space and, and dove completely into it. All right. So I think like uh, Gary says, you know, put, uh, what does he say, 50 hours or 60 hours into uh, any topic or subject and you're already, you know, possibly more educated than 90 percent of the, the, the world in that space. And, and I did that when it came to NFTs and, and blockchain and and uh, immediately went out to teach, you know, what I was learning as I was learning. And uh, with that, I started to see people in, you know, India and, and other places start to turn their monies around. And it just got really, it just got me excited. And the, the community I was with was all about spreading wealth, knowledge and empowerment. So that, that's what got me into this space. And I just really, I, I re recognized that the ceilings, you know, were, weren't there, like some ceilings that stopped women from, from growing out here in this like kind of corporate world, um, the race barriers, you know, a lot of these places, those kind of ceilings and barriers weren't as maybe prominent, you know, as they are out here, at least in, in, in the country or in my experience. Uh, so I saw there was a lot of opportunities for, for growth and for um, sharing this, you know, with other people. And uh, with that, I went out and uh, I had an amazing first half of the year, lost a lot, made a lot, you know, a lot of experiments happening. Um, and at the end of last year, towards the end of last year, I opened up a passive income um, uh, consulting business because I found a lot of platforms that helped me to create uh, just a, a nice passive income with my own assets, right? It wasn't it wasn't, you know, real estate where I still have to do some active thing. It wasn't, um, you know, e-commerce or different things like that. It was truly putting my money aside in certain platforms and vehicles that made money for me, you know, while I slept and just really wanting to get out here and, and show other people that there are so many options um, if you give yourself a chance to kind of I don't want to say catch up with the times, but just be in line with where the future is heading. Yeah, I, I think I think passive income is the dream. Mm -hmm. Um I'm I'm intrigued. You're you're getting me excited. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Like, you know, teach us a little bit here, like me and us on this space. Like, you know, obviously don't give it all away for free right. or you know, whatever <laughs> it's like something you usually consult for, you know, I get yeah. it. Um, but give us, you know, the the free stuff, the promotional, the the hook, like, you know, get us in here. A few a few tips about um Passive income. Oh, absolutely. Well, you know, you, you said something like passive income is the dream, right? And, and I'm here to tell you that this, you have to really make this a reality, right? We are no longer in the space and life where that could be a luxury. It has to be something you are going after and finding, right? And uh, I think with these, 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 and we're not going to go into politics so much, but with these new bills and new fair tax and all this, sort of, it's really going to be detrimental to people. So what I have discovered in this space of going from a check to check employee who was making a pretty decent, you know, middle, middle class income, but recognizing, Hey, at the end of my paycheck, I still have way too much month left. <laughs> right and something needs to fill that and it can't be another hourly wage like i don't physically humanly have it in me to be able to work another job and still be a mom and still do all this sort of stuff so passive income and truly understanding what it means to have your money make money for you was my absolute you know, my binders were on and I went out here into the space and finding that, you know, even with NFTs, it's not really a passive space, right? But there are um, companies out here that are creating these platforms in a, a safer way. We do have to be very, very aware that there are probably more, um, you know, they're, they're, they're more uh, kind of unscrupulous you know, people out here is also an easy way to, to take money from people. There are a lot of unscrupulous things out here, but there are massive platforms that are doing it right, right? And, and like you said, without giving away anything, there's, there's one um, company that after the big crash in, uh, on May 13th of 2022, right, right before VCon, uh, their, um, 
I forgot where I was going with that. But oh yeah, after that that crash, I had like little hundred. I, I lost a lot then too. Um, but I had I just started to put a couple of hundreds. I was I started going to these different communities, put a couple hundred dollars here or there with some of them that I like really went through and and researched or had someone I trust on there. And after that crash, I recognized that there was only like one or two of them where my funds were still making a simple maybe two to three percent a week. And I just started to look at them a little bit more, right? And like wait, what what sort of funds were those? No, my 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 assets, like whatever money I was putting away on these platforms. So my money, right, was still making two to three Yeah, that's what I'm asking. Like how do you like what what do you do to make the two to three percent? Like you're you're recommending that? Oh, I'm thinking. Or yeah, I mean, again, uh, you know, we'll, we'll we'll disclaimer no 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 advice or anything being given yeah, here. Sure. Totally but um, yes, like I'm not doing anything, right? I got a membership with a, with a company, or I you know um, studied a bit of arbitrage with another company, or you know, there's the the, the one that I I really do recommend to most of my clients is is a is a um, uh, a membership tier level where it comes with forex education, it comes with personal development education, it comes with wealth management, and it's it's it runs like your Hilton Honors points or your you know your Amex Sky. It's a, it's a loyalty rewards program, right? So it's not even really um, tied directly to the market. So your money is like hedged, right? And it has this um, again. I, I I'm in, in quotes when I have when I say safer, but it's a it's a very low risk space because it operates from a loyalty rewards program, right? It, it operates like the bank, basically, in the sense of you're putting your money in the account, they're trading with it um, or doing whatever else with it, again, like a bank would. Um, and then they're actually thanking you with some bonus points, right? If you were go to Amex and you buy something on your card and they give you, you know, I don't know, 100 points or something like that, and you get to use that for airline tickets or whatever, they have platforms out here that do the same thing, except your points aren't necessarily dedicated to just hotels. You know, you could pull it off as an income. So I started to really look into this company and, and, and to the point where I was flown out to um, the headquarters of this company and met with everyone, the CEO, the, the president, the, the, the financial team, the accountants, the legal team, because I'm like, wait, I need to know everything about this because this will absolutely disrupt, you know, the, the retirement industry would do all this sort of stuff in America if someone truly sees how these companies are benefiting people around the world. Um, and I, I dove completely into that um, and got all the information I needed with that company, met with every head of the company, met with the billionaires, the backers. It was an amazing experience to, to, to see what they're up to in the world and how they want to transform this economic space for the financially underserved, which is like 98% of the country, right? Or 95% of the world, right? So um, got really excited about that, came back and just really started to spread their mission here in the States. Um, and since then, I'm now one of the fastest, you know, uh, growing rec distributors, you know, of this platform, or refers of this platform here. Um, and looking to pair up with people around the country to just really get people understanding that passive income is no longer a luxury. Like it's here, it's accessible, right? So that's, that's one particular company. Um, there's other platforms that are tied to just- Let me, let me ask you a quick question. Is it a, is it a multi-level marketing type deal or it's something else? Yeah, I think all of these, all of these platforms have a affiliate marketing, referral marketing, relationship marketing, multi-level, however you want to identify it. All of them out here have that, you know, even- Do you, go ahead. So here's, here's my, my concern with some of uh -huh. those. Affiliate is a good idea. I don't, I think it's backwards or a little bit disingenuous sometimes when the system is you're only going to make money if you become a recruiter. Like they pitch it sometimes as like there's two parts. There's the main part and then there's recruiting if you want. But some of that's a lie. Some of it's like it's not recruiting if you want. It's like no matter how much money you give them and invest, you're only going to make like pennies yeah, unless you become a recruiter. Yeah. 
just transparently, I got to ask. Yeah. If, I'm you're, assuming if you're interested, not that type of thing, or is it? Or I, I no, 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 no. I appreciate the question. You're absolutely right. There are very backdoor spaces that uh, require you to do that. And this is, again, why this took me to fly across the country to make sure that this wasn't something like that, right? Because I come from, again, the financial space. Like, sometimes I just want clients. Clients don't want to do any of it. You know, they just want to make sure that they could set this aside. I manage it, they work it, and they do that. So for this particular for this particular platform, that's what it is. There's a set it and forget it strategy. There's a, you know, take the education and learn it and, 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 and utilize that to also create a higher passive income. And then there's also, hey, do you want to spread the mission, right? So I had to make sure um, that that was in place. So this is not one of those where you have to do anything. If you just want to be an account holder, which 90% of my clients are, then that's your choice. You know, so um, and, and, and that's a, a very comfortable space because you don't you don't want to put people in a space of like like you said, like a false advertisement. Right. And that space of, of MLM and network marketing, again, it's a beautiful space of entrepreneurship for people that want to come in and not have high capital and all of that stuff. It has it has its it has its amazing benefits. And then you also have bad apples who make it like that, right? Who sell it one way and then uh, and then it's something totally different. And uh, this, this particular one is not that, right? Well, all eight of them actually that I'm on right now are not that. So I do understand your question and no, this is, this is not that. Awesome. I love to hear that. And you know, I'm, I'm, you're selling me a little bit here. I'm getting intrigued because, uh, you know, this, this sounds as good as you're saying it sounds. If, if someone, me, somebody else, someone who's listening, like we want to find out more, um, you know, I'm just noticing, I don't, I don't see like a link tree or anything on your, uh, Twitter, you know, do you have like a separate website or like, you know, how do we, how do we figure out like what your services are, how much they cost, how much, how much you need to kind of get involved. And one thing I'll say here yeah. too, is we're, we're about 12 minutes from the end. The last 10 minutes, I always say for um like a guest self-promotion or for you to talk about whatever you want to talk about. So it's like, if you had a book coming out on a certain date, you'd say when and where you're signing it. Or if you're, you know, if you have a course, you would say how much the course costs. So that's part of what I'm asking now. So that's why I'll kind of like segue into that. Um, and if you don't want to promote anything, you could just, we could use the last 10 minutes, just keep going, whatever you want to talk about. But I always want to give you that chance because, you know, this is about you, this is about me. I'm out there as a host, you're out there as the guest, and you definitely want to, you know, promote to the audience. Yeah. What, what is the way to get in? What is the pricing structure? Like, how do, how do we, uh, how do we link up with Tan, uh, Tanya? Well, one, I wish I would have known that it would have been like a tad bit more secure, uh, uh, prepared for that, but no, no, oh, I'm so no sorry. you're absolutely right. And, and what we, we could, we could do many more episodes. Yes, at some point. yes, yes, yes. All guests are always invited. No, back. I love it because it pushes me. Right. Cause again, I've been in the space of just really doing a lot of one-on-ones, a lot of one-on-ones, a lot of talking, you know, I get referred to people and I do a lot of one-on-ones with people. Um, and I have not put all of that stuff on my socials like I need to. Um, I do have a site that's coming that's coming up. Um, I do have a what I could put in my uh, link now that you're telling me that is just what my clients have said about me, right? That where I am a distributor uh, for this particular company. Um, as far as uh, the pricing structures, it's, it's, it's so flexible, right? So you could come in like I, I um, I went to some college girls, right? It's like, hey, if you have fifty dollars, I could share, I could show you how that could make five bucks a month, right? You know, it's small because it's, it's just it's about teaching someone the power of, you know, how this money works and how your money could work for yourself, right? It's nothing big or life changing, but every little bit matters, right? Every little bit where you're showing someone how they could do something with what they have matters. So in, in this particular platform, um, the range is from anywhere from $50 onwards up to, I don't care, a million, right? You know, but the beginning entry for this, uh, for this, for this particular membership company is $50, right? And that goes up 50, 100, 250, 300, so on and so forth. Um, and that is what you're comfortable with. And what I love about it is the ideology behind this particular platform is 
hey, if we're going to teach you how to say trade, right, institutionalized trading is what they're doing, we are going to have your funds working for you at the membership level you came in. And at the end of your uh, at the end of your learning, which is about 14 months, we're actually going to give you everything you put in back, plus your bonus reward points that we're accumulating in that time. So now you have money you could actually trade with, right? So that was really the foundation of the company as it began to grow. And it, 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 it intrigued me because it's like a CD at a bank, except way more robust, right? So you're going to get everything you put back you're going to get everything back that you put in on top of the education, right? So, and why it was also looking like a retirement account, because as you put in, it's growing, but it's growing at a consistent rate without the ups and downs. So that was, well, that was, that is what's, what's going on there within this particular platform. Now, what I could do is put a link in my Twitter uh, to uh, what my clients have to say about me, and then also set up a calendar to get on with me to see how it works. Right. Uh, and I could, I could, yeah, I could do that. Uh, I am actually working on an ebook about making money while you sleep and, and, and the power of passive income uh, that will possibly be out in March, just a small ebook, maybe February. Um, and I also, like I said, for people who want to know maybe more, they're not as risk averse. So, so they want to go into different platforms. I do have access to leaders and owners and of, of other platforms out here that um, are just linked to say one market, you know, this membership or this rewards program is linked to it's a rewards program, right? So they're leveraged across several different markets and people are a lot more comfortable, especially the ones that are onboarding into the space um, are more comfortable with that. But then you have some people like, I'm in the crypto space, I get it, you know, let me know here. And then there's those and they have higher returns, you know, because it is purely investment, whereas this other platform is not an investment platform. And just just to clarify, the one where you could get in with 50 bucks, it's not, is it 50 bucks monthly or you literally could have just $50? Just $50 and dollars in, for, the, for that membership stay in. year. Yep, for that membership year. So it's 60 weeks. Oh, it's, it's yearly. It's 50 a year? 50 a year or however however else you want to oh, make that work, right? So that 50 a year would be at two, somewhere between two or 3% um, a week. That 50 would be about what, 150 or something at the end. And you could take the whole 150 out or you could now buy $150 worth of membership. Tanya, I, I don't know about the listeners. I've got 50 bucks. Okay. I'm, I'm down. Cool. I'm going to give you 50. Like if you, let's, let's set up a time uh after this not not right after because i gotta right. do something with my wife i gotta help take care of the baby but um but some other time like maybe later today tomorrow sometime in the week next cool. week whatever but I i've got 50 yeah months, so, try it out see how it works you know i've got more than but I, you know I, i'm always skeptical about these things i don't like things that have a thousand dollar buy-in for me to see how i feel I about feel it that. 50 bucks to see how i feel exactly. okay cool I, and i trust you if it was someone else i'd be like no fuck you <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like it, it's someone I like someone good energy. I'm like, okay, yeah, 50, okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. So yeah, I don't, I don't know if that convinces the audience. Not financial advice. You know, you make your own decisions. Um, but I'm, I'm in. I trust Tanya, and I, I'm gonna find out about uh, you know, what the system is. If it's fifty bucks barrier to entry, I'm in. I'll, I'll check that awesome. out. So just one. Yeah, no, no, yeah. We'll, we'll definitely get that going. And and the name of my company, I'm, I'm actually in the middle of uh, getting the LLC. It's, it's a few days from me receiving it is TLP, right? My initial wealth solutions, LLC. So that, that is my consulting company. And uh, the reason why I'm not saying any one name of any particular platform is because I do offer many, but this particular one is probably like my, my hero company, because I do feel it's best for people onboarding into the space. Love it. And then one other thing I was going to say is, I am, I would like to say a proficient writer, you know, not to sound egotistical, but you need help. Um, I've done a lot of writing and editing. I spent, uh, forget how long, maybe a year and a half, a year or so doing writing for a professional video game uh, website. I don't know if you've heard of it, Twinfinite. I don't know if you play no. video games, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> um, you know, they're still around, but I, you know, I'm pretty good at writing and editing. So if you need help with that, if you need help setting up a link tree, I've helped a few people with that. Yeah. Um, you know, if you don't know how to do it or it just seems weird, 
whatever or you just like don't feel like doing it i'll do it for you i don't give a fuck like i'm trying to help people network network to get work you know put out the generosity give without expectation i'm i'm trying to walk the walk on all those fucking things you know i'm not um like a financial advisor you know yeah. i sometimes i think what can i offer and you know those are my skills i could write i could speak you know I, i'm a problem solver i'm a critical thinker i'm an artist yeah. so you know, this is the writing kind of side of it. If you need help, cool. If you don't, that's fine. You know, you're totally good the way you are. Um, but anything you help with that you think I could help with, let me know. And I'm uh, I'm happy to help. Oh, I appreciate you. I appreciate you just sharing your, your skill sets, you know, with me and, and putting yourself out there to help me. Because, yeah, you know, I'm an, I'm an old, I call myself old, but I'm an old person out here. And uh, a lot of the stuff, you know, is like as soon as you learn something new or a new platform, something else comes out that seems a little bit more ooh and ah to it. So um, I will take you up on on your your writing um, skill set and and link tree and, and all that stuff. So I thank you and I acknowledge you uh, again just for your growth. Um, Kowski, it's been amazing. You know, your energy is infectious. I absolutely love you. I'm so proud of what I've seen happening since the beginning days and uh, you coming out here and just doing it because that in and of itself is an inspiration for us out here who may be a little pensive to doing it, but you're, 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 you're out here, you're doing it. And um, I, I just want to acknowledge you for your heart and just, just everything about what you're doing and congrats on your baby girl. I know I uh, said that before, but wanted to say that again, because I do feel like there's been even more of an umph since that beautiful, <laughs> precious human being has entered both you and your wise lives, you could absolutely know that uh, you are brimming and beaming. And uh, I just want to really acknowledge you and tell you how much I appreciate this space today. <laughs> Thank you so much. I That's beautiful. Um, I really appreciate that. I appreciate the love. I, I take all that love in and I receive it. And I also, while keeping all of it, I radiate love right back at you. I, I appreciate you being here from, you know, the beginning of my journey. I appreciate you seeing me along the way and being somewhere who's able to kind of like cheer me on and be proud. I, I, you know, it's, it's scary sometimes doing new things or, you know, I, I've started, I wanted to do a podcast. I don't know for how many years, and this was the year I started, mm -hmm. you know? So it's like, you know, sometimes it takes a while to get there. Um, and now I got it rolling. You know, in the beginning, I, I thought I was going to do this thing. One of my friends was going to co-host. That didn't work out. Then I thought it was like over. And then I had to be like, no, OK, I'm going to I'm going to do it on my own. I'm going to keep going. So it's kind of like that thing you said where sometimes you attract these experiences mm -hmm. and like the universe, I think like gave me an experience on purpose where my co-host wasn't going to work out. Cause all the time it was like, I was meant to just have the courage to do it on yeah. my own and have one-on-one -on -one interviews with guests. So that's how it ended up happening. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of growth. There's so many lessons through this. I, I love you as well. I love what you're doing. I love that you put out these positive messages, spirituality. We have so many of the same veins. That's one of the most beautiful things I'm finding doing this podcast is I talk to all these people and if, if it's the law of attraction or whatever, but I keep attracting like people who have similar topics to talk about and all yes. these, all these resonations within me that are within them, like people who either, you know, are religious, but have the same core values mm -hmm. as me or are spiritual, not religious like me, and not only have the same core values, but even have some of the same way that we got to forming uh, some of what those core values are. Mm -hmm. So you're thanking me. I thank you right back. I, to the listeners, I hope everybody checks out Tanya. We're going to get some links up in the next days here. Yeah. So, you know, be a little patient, but stay tuned for that. I'm going to help her out 100%. Same thing, honestly, anyone in the audience. People need help. Like, I'm not at the point where I have like 100 requests a day. Then I'll have to start figuring something out. Right now, almost nobody's asking. I get <laughs> one person every few days or so. And it only takes like an hour to set up a link tree. So, like, if you need help with some shit that takes an hour, like, yeah, I'm a busy person, but... I like to help people and if I can make it happen, I'll make it happen. And as long as I'm not getting inundated, like, which just is not the case right now, um, then I fucking got your back. Now we are, we are pretty much at the end here, Tanya. Let me, uh, let me just throw it back to you. If you want to take one more minute, if the mic drop moment, aphorism, just last, like kind of blast it to the audience type thing. And then I'll, uh, I'll do our closing message. All right. Awesome. Uh, no, you know, if I have to, have to leave a word with, with, with people is, you know, live in your possibility, right? Live out into the future and do not take your past into the future, right? You know, so I, I would say create your possibility. Your word creates your world. So be really responsible with your words and understand that you have the 
ability to create a beautiful, powerful, lovely life, all with what's already within you. And thank you so much, Kowski. Again, we will get these links out here. I'm here to empower, to help, to assist uh, anyone on their passive income journey. And uh, yeah, that's, that's what I would leave with everyone. Much love. Thank you so much. So closing out here, uh, just want to thank the listeners. If you're listening, if you're in the audience, thank you so much for coming and giving us your time and, you know, sharing lessons and learning with us. Um, you know, if you could, if you could like and retweet the space, you know, DM it, DM it to uh, your mom, your your brother, your sister. Tell everybody about the space. You know, share it with the whole world. Just, uh, you know, start sharing it, spreading it out there. And, um, you know, feel free to reach out to Tanya if anything, you know, that we kind of mentioned is something that resonated with you as it did for me. Please reach out to her. Um, you know, I'll give her my thumbs up of approval. I have not worked with her before uh, in the regard that I'm about to. But just knowing her for several months and uh, like I think half a year or a year almost like, you know, I think she's a beautiful person, beautiful energy, beautiful uh, personality. So that's my kind of thumbs up of approval there. And Tanya, I just want to thank you as well for coming on today again. I know I thanked you at the beginning, but thank you for giving me your time. Thank you for sharing your voice, your vulnerabilities, your spirituality, your philosophies, your lessons with the listeners, you know, your your trauma a little bit, some of the negative parts, sharing the lesson about how you grow through the negative. Uh, and I really appreciate you for that. You know, the podcast just for the audience is on Apple Podcast, Twitter. Uh, sorry, <laughs> Twitter. Apple. Well, actually, it is on Twitter. Obviously, we're on Twitter now. I meant to say Apple Podcast Anchor uh, and also Spotify. The link will be on this episode uh, in Twitter Spaces. This full recording will be up on the Anchor and all that within the next few days. It takes me a couple of days to get all of them up. And the last message, Tanya, that we always close out, close out on, I don't know if you know about this, it's a message from a good friend of ours. It's a message from our friend, Afakasi Brand. And that message is, if you haven't heard it today... <laughs> Tanya, do you know? You are loved. Exactly. If you haven't heard it today, you are loved. Universe is full of energy. We choose to believe that that energy is love itself and that you are made out of love and that you are loved. And if you hadn't heard it today, from me, from Tanya, from the universe, thank you for coming by because you